so the step sequencer also works for other instruments. So let's just get rid of the editor for a minute and I'll open up the media browser and I'll show you another one of the cool new additions here, which is drag and drop facility. You can see drag audio files here to create instrument tracks. So formally, if I dragged audio from anywhere, even my desktop to this space here, it would create a new audio track automatically and then you know, load the sample onto that track. But if you now drag audio files to this section where the, where the track headers are, and I tried this from the desktop, it didn't work for me. Maybe that's something that I'm going to add later, but I had to do it from the browser here. So if I go to my desktop in there, samples, uh, and then I drag in samples from there. So I've got this bass one. So if I drag that one in now, you can see it then pops up these options. And we've got loads of options now for what we want to do with that sample, what instrument we want to load it into. So we're going to start off with Quick Sampler. This is a brand new instrument interface here. It's really cool. Um, again, if we want to compare this to Ableton Live, then this is pretty much the, the simpler. You've got an Ableton Live, the sort of cut down sampler instrument. And now I can instantly play it. And yeah, I can change all of the settings here. I mean, let's just let's just um, quickly run through the different parameters on here just to give you a, an overview. So we've got tuning. Uh, coarse and fine, semitones and fractions of a semitone. Uh, you've got filtering. And then your amplitude, so your level, panning, and so on. And yeah, let's say this is a bass, so I can turn the polyphony off, set it to monophonic, so we're just hearing one note at all times. Uh, and then below that, we've got our envelopes. So we've got the amplitude envelope if you want to change the duration of the sound when I play notes. Let's just turn the filter off. So yeah, amplitude envelope, we've got um, filter envelope. So we just use the envelope depth here to turn that up. And then edit the envelope below. And then you've got a pitch envelope. This is quite a nice one. Again, turn up the envelope depth and then you'll see it affecting the course. Turn this down a bit. I think it's clipping the output. So it's still a bit loud. So yeah, some really nice envelope options there on the sampler. Uh, and then you've got additional LFO modulators as well here. So just to show you one of those quickly, you can see down here, we've got the target. So we can just choose uh, pitch just to make it nice and obvious. <laughs> For the moment, obviously we're running out of time. Um, so if I just use a loop option, like forward. Again, you have really nice editing on the sample window here. Um, so you can quickly set up the kind of things you want to do, loop start and end, and then uh, crossfade as well. So this X down here is actually a crossfade edit tool. So if I just move the mouse over that one, you can see with the crossfade length below, and also on the display, I can set up a nice crossfade. Let's turn off that LFO modulation. So 
So yeah, set up a loop there very easily. And we've got some LFO modulation. Bring it down, make it a bit less drastic. And if I wanted to have this LFO uh, come in and out with the mod wheel, then I can just choose the via option here. Find our mod wheel. And yeah, you can set a range there. So yeah, that's me just cranking the mod wheel up whilst I'm holding notes. So yeah, that's a sort of uh, quick run through the different controls on, on Sampler. So let's just close it down. And once again, on our track here, if we open up the editor, we have Step Sequencer. And let's just close that up. So now we get a, a strip here. Instead of the whole piano roll where you can play lots of notes, we just have a, a single row here. So um, we can actually just change the root to maybe lower octave. And then it's exactly the same. So um, we can expand it by clicking there. I'll just get rid of the inspector for now, simplify our view. Um, and then choose whatever parameters we want. So we can change the velocity again, we can change the gate. Uh, we can also tie notes. We can make this one longer. And if you want to fine tune this length here, we can then just use gate to make it a little bit shorter so it's not going across the entire two steps. And we could also change the octave up or the individual note. So if, again, if I just click plus there, note comes up. Let's maybe just change it to a 32 step pattern and I'll just have it going up to the A sharp just on that first time it loops round. and maybe even turn that step off. And let's maybe click plus again and just change the octave of some of these. Let's have an octave up maybe for that one. So as well as being able to edit all of these different parameters here, you can also add automation. And the way you do that now is by clicking the plus at the top here, going to automation, and then finding our instrument. So quick sampler, and then going in and let's just choose the filter. So now we have our filter cutoff automation lane. And then the way that we, uh, add events here is just to turn the steps on, uh, expand it out, and then you can see you've got the automation value just below. So let's just open up the sampler, turn the filter back on, bring the envelope depth down, and now I'm just going to use this automation lane instead to make the cutoff go up and down.
So yeah, pretty powerful step sequencer there as you can quite easily add automation lanes as well as regular uh, note lanes. 